Hello, I am the Programming Dunce and today I will be discussing files. In this video, I will be discussing the file stream classes in C++ and the file struct and corresponding functions in C. Now, C and C++ by themselves offer no support for file manipulation. However, the libraries we use interface with the underlying operating system, which actually does the heavy lifting. However, both Unix-based systems and Windows systems have some components written in assembly language. Assembly languages allow you to program directly on the hardware, CPU, and devices. However, if you saw assembly language code, you would agree that it should be avoided unless no other language would work. So when we work with files, the functions and methods make calls to the operating system to do operation A to a given file. The C library offers the file struct in a given series of functions with that file struct. You include stdio.h to work with files in C, just like with the console. The fopen function returns a pointer to a file struct, or null if no file was opened. But should you have a working file struct, then you can use it to read or write to that file. Assuming you have the right permissions and the mode of opening allows, you might have told it to just read and so only read functions work. Or that file is a read only or run by someone who doesn't have write permission. One function is the fgetc function which returns an integer representing the character. If it equals the special value of EOF defined in the library, then you have reached the end of file and no more characters are available. Other read functions come in the form of fread, fscanf, fgets, the last one being the string version of fgetc. Write functions, if you're allowed, come in the form of fwrite, fprintf, f put c and f put s. Choosing which one to use is up to you depending on what data you want to work with. Another aspect to consider is where in the file are you working with. A file from the point of view of an application is a continuous stream of data on a disk. If you choose to write at the beginning or middle of the file, the operation will not shift whatever data is already there over for the new data. Your new data will override whatever data was already there. Could the federal government tell you what was there before? Perhaps, but from our standpoint, that old data would be gone. If you do have the need to insert some text into the middle of a text file, you would need to recover the text ahead of what your insert point before you start writing and then repeat the cycle. The fseek and fpeak functions would be useful to any insert operation. Files come in two major forms, text and binary. Text files have just plain text in them. A human can easily read it in a text editor. Binary files have a bunch of gibberish data in them that humans can't properly process in a text editor. However, that gibberish does have value to some application that can read it. Docx is a binary file that looks ugly in Notepad or Emacs, but can be processed by a word editor like Microsoft Word to present formatted text. As stated before, C++ has the fstream class, which branch off into the ifstream and ofstream classes. Many of the methods correlate with the C functions shown earlier. ifstream references input file stream and is used for reading files. ofstream references output file stream and is used for writing to files. 
a small in the small code example, I focused more on the C++ file streaming classes. I also have an additional window open, Notepad++. This is to demonstrate that when you are working with a file, and when the file is modified, Notepad++ will detect this. I first declare an output file object and have it focus on a file called sumfile.txt. You then want to make sure, check to make sure that the file is open to avoid any runtime bugs. If it is open, I then prompt the user to type in three sentences using the std cn object. Each time the user presses enter, the sentence is added to, a to the file. If I want it to, as it is set up, the object overrides the file should it already exist, which it does in this case. If I want it to append the, to the end of the file, then the second parameter for the open method should be stdiosapp. After the three sentences are written, the file is closed and then reopened by a newer IF stream object. Notepad, which is a Windows application, should also be refreshed at this point. Here, it just reads a file line by line using the std getline function method function, not a class method. Don't forget to make sure it is open. The program prints out the contents of the file line by line. Under Visual C++, which I'm using, the new line character is omitted from the extracted string. While porting my DES encryption program over to Linux, I discovered that G++ keeps the new line character on the string. While that may not be erroneous in this application, that is something to keep in mind. I actually had to make changes to the source code of the Linux DES program to address this difference. The program then waits for the user to exit. In the next video, I discuss operator overloading which was a C++ feature that allows for a cleaner source code. Thank you for watching.